Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships. Today, my battle will be ruined by a submarine showing how balanced they are inside the game. We will talk about that in a moment, now I just need to introduce the ship that I'm sailing. And why I'm sailing it? So, it's the HMS Aginko, the tier 5 British battleship, and this ship is absolutely terrible. Get back. It got terrible speed, terrible armor, terrible guns. The only thing that really matters about the ship are the secondaries. They are very, very good and they are the only thing about the ship that make it absolutely fun to play. That's why I really like the ship, it's not very good, but it's like the underdog, you know? You, you play the, ga the game the hard mode and you know it, but so, it's fun actually. You are having fun, and that's what's important with the Agin Code. That's why you saw so much replays of the Agin Code into this channel. I already released, I think, two of these, and that's the third one. And you are about to see typical Agin Code stuff, like secondary gameplay, which means close quarters gameplay, and that's what I like in World of Warships, and I hope you like that too. Now, let's talk about the Farragut. The Farragut around the corner of this island is waiting to push the submarine on my side. But he's probably waiting for his time. He's waiting for me to shoot, so I'm defenseless. But here's an issue. Aginkot got secondaries. <laughs> and I think this Farragut is about to discover that if he wasn't aware. Because, yeah, that's half of its remaining health. And that's the other half. Goodbye, Mr. Fraggot. Thank you for playing. Now, did you know that when you subscribe to my channel, you get a stupidity detector? It displays a bright red light in the middle of your screen when you're about to do something stupid. And I think this Fraggot would have liked to have that. So, subscribe to your channel and just enjoy this advantage. It's unfair. But that's what it is to subscribe to a Legends Reach channel. You get a bit of... Yeah, you get a bit l more legendary. Not really legendary, but a tiny little bit like one person, something like that. So, let's talk about this battle again. Um, I am performing a U-turn, because I don't want to stay here. They have two battleships and a destroyer and probably a submarine also on this side because they have two submarines and there is probably one on this side as well. So that will be an issue and I definitely don't want to... Well, talking about submarine. <laughs> there it is! So, you see the size of the counterplay against submarines. You can use your anti-submarine warfare planes and that's about it. The submarine can ping you if you are spotted. So, I'll launch some homing torpedoes in your general direction that are, as the name suggests, home, homing towards you and all you have in return is some ASW planes that you don't know where to aim because the submarine is not detected or even worse there is something called shotgunning it's when a submarine gets very close to you like, uh, I don't know, two kilometers, it just surfaces, launch its torpedoes, and go back into the depth. And then it dodges all your attacks from your ASW planes because it's submerged so you don't see it, and you just die in the process because you just took, well, a lot of torpedoes right in the face. That's something that is happening quite often, and honestly, it's frankly disgusting. I remember there was a video where you saw the developers or at least the community managers from Wargaming saying yeah, shotguns doesn't exist, it's not something that happens very often so we don't really need to do anything about it. And then right in front of the developers playing, right at the same time you see a, a submarine just submerging, shotgunning the destroyer with, with homing torpedoes and then resubmerging. Yep, that's called karma, boys. <laughs> and really, it showed all the irony be behind that. It's so stupid as a gameplay. On a gameplay perspective, it's so stupid because there is no counterplay, no direct counterplay. What are you supposed to do? 
I play World of Rush just because I like surface surface ships. I can tolerate a bit of carriers sometimes, but carriers plus submarine, oh boy. So I'm really dreading fighting submarines because yeah, it's not really fun. You just say ping after ping and then you get home, then then you see homing torpedoes. Yeah, it's like fighting against, I don't know, an interface or something. You are not fighting an actual warship. And that's why I signed for. And so sometimes it really triggers me to, to not be able to, to, to fight surface ships as I would like to. Now, let's shoot at the Acasta with the secondaries. And yeah, Mr. Dunkirk, you are getting pinged. Sorry, it's not me. And yeah, you are about to see some questionable balancing, let's see that way. I mean, look at that. The Dunkirk just took a big hit. Okay, fair enough. Now the submarine is pinging the Dunkirk. What's the Dunkirk going to do? What is he supposed to do? The torpedoes are homing at the Dunkirk. He ba you can basically dodge them, but not eternally. At a certain point of time, you cannot dodge them anymore because the torpedoes can really outturn you even if, you, when you are a battleship. It's very easy. So what's the Dunkirk about to do? He's just doomed, basically. He's fighting against two surface ships and one ship that he cannot see, but that's pinging him to death and sending homing torpedoes very quickly. You can mitigate the pings. So the submarine is sending you an imaginary ping that allows him to, to track you so the torpedoes can home in your direction. But you can mitigate it by using your damage control party. So I let you picture this. A team of damage control experts inside your ship is just hitting the ship with their wrench to remove the imaginary ping. So the torpedoes cannot hey, aim at you anymore and they are not homed anymore. Sounds stupid? Yeah, that's because it is. Now, let's take a shot at the Emerald and see what we can do against this guy. I think I can sit out at this guy with my high explosive shells. Unfortunately, he didn't die right here and then. But I'm sure he's not going to survive for very long. Now, I'm in a bit of a tough spot because I'm outranked by the New Mexico and he is my right here. They are one tier above me and they have reusable main battery guns, unlike me. The only thing that my main battery guns can do, basically, instead of doing actual damage, is just um, putting some fire, lighting some fires on, on the enemy ships. And yeah, as you can see, minimal damage. You, you shoot with, uh, I think this ship got 14 guns. Yeah, 14 guns shooting and only 4 hits on a target as big uh, and fat as the New Mexico. Yeah. You are starting to see a pattern right here. We are losing this match. We got one cap on C. B is being contested and they have A. On the points is pretty equal, but it's fairly obvious that we don't have the map control. They are about to have like two thirds of the map. That's going to be an issue because we always when this happens, you enter what we call a crossfire zone. A crossfire is when uh, ships are shooting at you from different directions and you are obviously broadside to someone at some point. And that's when you are at your weakest. And that's the problem here. We are running into a crossfire because of that. Look at that. If I angle towards the Andrea Doria, I show my broadside towards someone else. And that's really not a situation that I can live with. Uh, we absolutely need to, to kill this Andrea Doria and the other ships as well. So I'm going to use my shitty guns and light some fires on the Andrea Doria and try to kill him as soon as possible. Now, the difference between the Andrea Doria and the Agincourt, besides the tier, the Andrea Doria being at tier 6, is that the Agincourt got more guns, but is less accurate. The Andrea Doria doesn't have many guns, 
but it's not very accurate either, and that's the problem. For him, at least. Because he just doesn't send enough shit to the wall and hope it's going to stick. You can do that in an android or you just don't have enough guns to do so. So he's just about to burn. And he I just lighted a perm of fire because he just repaired the, the, the fire that I set before. And so now he's going to burn. And he's probably willing to disengage now, but man, I'm sorry, it's too late. You're going to die, right here, and then. Because, yeah, that's the second fire and you cannot put it down, so I'm sorry. But here's my second kill. And an arsonist, because, yeah, you took a lot of fire damage. Now, we have the Ismail. We have to kill this Ismail as well. This guy is really a threat. It's not very accurate either, but it got a lot of guns as well. Four triple turrets, that's quite a lot of guns. Even if they are not accurate, at some point they are going to hit you. And they are going to hit you hard. So let's, let's shoot at this guy. And hope it's going to kill him. High caliber, fire. He repaired the fire, oh boy. Yeah, he's going to disengage and no, nope, the Bayern got him. Now, I think we're about to have a bit of a surprise. Mr. Acasta, what are you doing here? For, unfortunately for the Acasta, I had one turret that was that was loaded. Now, the issue, because of the Acasta, I must go forward. I just cannot stay here, because if the Acasta decided to launch some torpedoes, I would be dead. So, I absolutely need to move. And my turrets are not quick enough to, to catch the ships that are here. And I absolutely need to, to prepare myself because there is probably something waiting for me on the other side of that island. Because they still have a New Mexico and a submarine, the Undyne. So I absolutely need to, to be ready. With at least my turrets pointed in the right direction. I managed to take out the Emerald and that's my last salvo here. I absolutely need to clear that island and see what I can do against the other ships. Torpedoes direct front. Torpedoes direct front. Oh boy, the submarine. Torpedoes the submarine is just in front of me. Okay, you, you can see the, the, the ping right here. Yep, and what's my counterplay? What am I supposed to do? I don't see the guy. He's just pinging me. He will send me torpedoes. Fortunately for me, there's the wreck of the Acasta that is blocking. The, um, the torpedo, so if he wants to torpedo me, well, he cannot. Now, the New Mexico right here. I don't really have the penetration with the armor piercing shells to sit out of this guy or to do any kind of significant torpedo damage, at least in my opinion. So I strongly prefer to stick with the high explosive uh, and to do more damage relative to time, some damage on time. Uh, light some fires and wait, because that's a second risk too. They are very good at setting fires. The problem being that it's not a one versus one, it's a two versus one. The New Mexico got a friend in the form of a submarine, and this submarine is going to really bother me. He's not going to, to, to see his friend just fighting, you don't want an equal fight. And yeah, that's just what he does. That's called shotgunning. Look at that. Less than one kilometer and the guy just sent me sent me enough torpedoes to nearly kill him. To nearly kill me. So he just destroyed my fight. And now I'm a one-shot kill for the New Mexico because of this submarine. At least I got a Kraken, but this New Mexico is going to kill me. So yeah. Good luck to the Bayern to win this fight. So music please. And Let's have some fun watching our friend the Bayern just losing the fight. Because, yeah, there's nothing this guy can do. I'm sorry, Bayern, but Wargaming nearly killed you with a submarine as well. Yeah, so the Bayern is supposed to fight one destroyer, uh, which is pretty low on half, so he might kill the destroyer. But what about the New Mexico? The New Mexico is abroad uh, at half of its original health. So, yeah, there's nothing this band can do. So, it's a loss. We will see the, the results of it pretty soon. 
don't we? Oh yeah, because they are about to reach 900 points. Yeah, they just did and they are about to reach 1000 points pretty quickly. So that's why the, the fast forward. <laughs> yeah. So, this battle wasn't very fun. I don't really like playing against submarines. But at least I managed to do a fair amount of damage. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's a bit different than the ones I do most of the time. But tell me if you like this kind of concept. I wish you all a very good day. And I will see you all next time, folks. Bye-bye.